In this video, we go through the steps to simulate the laser line width of a semiconductor laser. First, let's describe the origin of line width in a laser. We consider a phasor diagram where we plot the real and imaginary parts of the laser's electric field and where we have removed the oscillations from the carrier. The ideal laser would have a vector that is constant and the optical spectrum would be a delta function. However, each time there is a spontaneous emission event, we add that photon, which has a random orientation in the phasor diagram, to the laser field. This causes variations in the position of the laser electric field vector. This leads to a phase variation, which in turn means that the frequency of the laser varies, and thus there is a line width. Theoretical investigations into the line width of the laser were done when lasers were first proposed. The shallow town's line width tells us that the line width is Lorentzian shaped and the equation has several important factors. First, the line width is proportional to the square of the line width of the optical cavity or the resonator. This is why we aim to design resonators with the highest quality factor possible or the smallest cavity line width. The line width is inversely proportional to the optical power, so we want to have high optical output power lasers. Finally, there is a population inversion factor, which is the fraction of electrons in the excited state versus the difference of the population. This inversion factor is defined for two level systems here. As an example, in a fabry perot semiconductor laser, we can find the line width is typically around 1 MHz. And experimentally, we can see that as we increase the optical power, uh, we will reduce the line width. An important point missing in this equation is that the index of refraction changes with the carrier density, so we have an additional effect where the laser cavity is being modulated by the noise, which leads to an additional spectral broadening. So the line width is multiplied by 1 plus alpha squared. There are several methods to measure the optical line width of a laser. The standard approach is to use the mixing properties of a detector by taking two optical signals, adding them, having the detector mix the signals, and measuring the RF spectrum. The spectrum will show us the line width. The two optical signals can come from the same laser with a time delay, or one of them being modulated, or it can come from two separate lasers. The approach we present here is based on two separate lasers. The first laser is an ideal continuous wave, or CW laser, with no noise. The second, is a directly modulated laser using the rate equation model, which has noise and wavelength fluctuations. To understand how this experiment works, we begin with an electric field description of each laser. The two lasers operate at slightly different frequencies. In this example, one is at 193.1 terahertz, and the second is detuned by 0.1 gigahertz. This corresponds to a wavelength difference of 0.8 picometers. The directly modulated laser rate equation model outputs an electric field that consists of an optical carrier with amplitude and phase fluctuations. These two lasers are added together using a splitter. The electric fields are added, and the detector takes the square of the electric fields to get a power. The squaring results in a mixing of the two signals. To understand how mixing occurs at the detector, we plot the optical spectrum of the two lasers. The two lasers operate at slightly different frequencies. The directly modulated laser has an optical line width due to the phase fluctuations. These two lasers' electric fields are added together using a splitter, and the detector takes a square of the electric fields. The squaring results in a mixing of the two signals. If you go through the math, you will find that there are four terms. Two signals will be at the sum of the frequencies, namely twice the optical carrier, and because the detector is a low-pass filter, it will not respond to these double frequency signals. The signals that are left will be the difference frequency signals. The signal will be a sinusoid at the difference frequency with fluctuations. We take the Fourier transform of this time domain signal to obtain the frequency response. We see on the RF spectrum analyzer the difference frequency together with a line width that comes from the laser fluctuations. 
the line width measured here is the same line width as the original laser. To extract the line width from the RF spectrum analyzer, we curve fit the data to a Lorentzian line shape function. The W parameter is the line width of the signal and is the line width of the original laser. Different lasers can have very different line widths, and this will depend on the laser model parameters that are used. The ones that are most important for the laser are the amount of spontaneous emission that is added to the laser field and how these emissions change the optical frequency of the laser. The coupling between emissions and optical frequency is determined by the line width enhancement factor alpha h. We can see the impact of spontaneous emission by varying the spontaneous emission factor parameter and repeating the line width simulations. We can see that doubling this beta parameter increases the line width of the laser.